Sports Final. Hello and welcome to a slim and trim version of Sunday Sports Final. I'm Joe Rose. Guy Rawlings has the night off. All right, baseball after splitting the first two with the Mets, the Fish back on the doorsteps for first place in the division, tied with Atlanta, a game back of New York. Shea Stadium crowd getting a bird's eye view. First inning, two on for Mike Piazza. List one to the gap in right center. Brings home Roger Cedena and Roberto Alomar. Mets get a three-zip lead in the first. Play of the game coming up in the fourth. Cliff Floyd rockets one to deep right. Jeremy Burnett makes a circus catch. Crashes into the wall, but still hangs on. Rob Floyd of extra bases. Jeff D'Amico helping out his own cause, too. Gives up just three hits through seven shutout innings. Striking out five. The lone Marlin highlight coming up with Luis Castillo. He's going to actually rob fellow second baseman Alomar of a hit up the middle in the seventh. A backhand stop and the throw. Great play. Gets him at first, but the Marlins run short tonight. They lose three to nothing. Going up against these guys, you get pumped up, but you control it here and there. Just a, it's a free first inning, man. That's what you got to do. Like I said, you got a lot of game left. That's the first inning. You know. I felt good the whole night, even the first inning. All right, the Braves trying to keep pace with the Mets, jumping all over the Reds in the second. Keith Lockhart with a big blow, a three-run homer. The Braves win it 7-5. to five. All right, Marlins now two games back, tied with Montreal. Atlanta's just one back. After getting stunned by Sacramento in Game 3, a loss today, and the Lakers would be one game away from elimination. Game 4 from the Staples Center, Kings come out red hot again. Hito Turkoglu, a double-double, including this nasty dunk down the middle. Racing out to a 24-point first-half lead, but the Lakers chip away. Tamaki Walker hits a half-court buzzer beater. Cuts it to 14. Fourth quarter, Robert Ory gets it to three. Then Lakers' final possession, down two. Christian, rebound O'Neal. He does it again, Robert Ory hitting the game-winning three. As time expires, the Lakers even up the series at two with a 199 win. I didn't even look at the clock. I figured if I can get my rhythm and shoot it, you know, we was going to be all right. I didn't even worry about that because if you worry about that, you're going to either rush your shot and throw your shot off. So I just took my time and got it under control and knocked it down. All right, fast cars, high drama, controversy, and a climatic finish. Sounds like a James Bond movie, right? Try the Indy 500. Pick it up on lap 172. Leader Thomas Schechter takes the turn too high, crashes into the wall. The second leader to be knocked out of the race. The race goes under caution. So a lot of the leaders go to the pits. Coming out of the pits, Gil D. Ferran loses a wheel. Again, the race is under caution, and all those in the pits have to line up behind the new leader and defending champ, Elio Castroneves. Castroneves gambling by not pitting, running low on fuel, hoping to hold off a late push by Paul Tracy. And as Tracy tries to pass with two laps to go, rookie Laurent Radon crashes into the wall. The yellow flag comes out again. Castro Nevis takes the checkered flag under caution. Tracy protests, but officials rule the crash happened just seconds before Tracy passed. The replay shows the decision was the right one. Castro Nevis again climbs the infield fence, winning his second straight Indy 500. I passed him around the outside and came around and... Uh... You know, they said that it was under yellow, but I didn't see the green was still up in my eyes. I saw the green and, uh, you know, so we're going to protest and see what happens because I, I feel that I was ahead of them. Last year was harder because I have also back marks in front of me. And all of a sudden now I'm, I had in front of me a, a much more of a challenge. And I didn't know if I lift off, if I keep going. Well, guys, I did it. I did it again. An excited guy there. We're not done with action on the track today's. Racing nightcap, the Coca-Cola 600. Under caution with 42 laps to go. Leader Jimmy Johnson overshoots his pit stall. NASCAR makes him go back. That opens the door for Mark Martin, who led the final 42 laps for his first win in 73 races. Well, Tiger may have been out of the picture after three rounds, but it was awfully crowded at the top of the PGA Memorial today. 13 guys within five strokes of the lead heading into the final round. Jim Furyk among the crowd, chipping from 30 feet on 12. Gets it to drop for the birdie. Pulls him to within a three-way tie for the lead at 11 under. Then on 15 from the bunker. Does he get any better than this shot? Watch this for an eagle. That gives him a two-stroke lead. He finishes at 14 under. Today, 65 is the lowest final round score by a winner ever in the Memorial. Hey, no time to chit-chat. When we come back, we'll check in at Dolphins Camp and take a look at one of the hottest position battles. Well, sort of. And the Canes hoping to break out the brooms at the line. 
Therapeutic Acura TL Type S. 14 days, 220 gallons of perfection. I handcraft the beer. Talk to me. They handcraft the food. Now, with our Jamaican sirloin, I recommend the alligator ale. Mm. Hops, we're really into this. I am making beer here. At Hops, we definitely know steaks, like our signature Brewmaster steak, perfectly seasoned, then grilled to mouthwatering perfection. This is one tasty steak. Mmm, does this look good or what? Get yourself into hops today and try a tender, juicy Brewmaster steak. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. And welcome back. The Finns wrapped up quarterback school number three earlier this week. And one of the most intriguing battles brewing in Dolphins camp these days is, of all things, the third quarterback position. If big names and lofty credentials guarantee NFL roster spots, then Cade McNown would be the Dolphins' third string quarterback by default but his inconsistency has left McNown on the roster bubble, opening the door of opportunity for some new blood, namely rookie Tim Lebchik. The 6'6 free agent out of football powerhouse <coughs> Robert Morris is receiving some major hype about his chances to unseat McNown and make the final roster. It's exciting, you know, knowing that the opportunity's there. But, uh, you know, it's going to be it's going to be tough. You know, there's still a lot to learn. He's got the arm strength. That's that's not going to be an issue. And he seems to be smart enough. I think the biggest thing with him, even though we're, we're not doing a lot of quarterback movement things, you know, athletically, will he be able to to move his feet well enough to to do the things he has to do to to uh, to play in this league? The NFL is a quantum leap from the tiny <clears throat> Robert Morris campus situated just outside Pittsburgh. Back there, Lebchik was a big fish in the small Northeast Conference pond. In fact, he owns most of the colonial quarterback records. But then again, <clears throat> Robert Morris has only been in the football business since 1994. In my experience with some guys that maybe hadn't been to, you know, top SEC schools or top Big Ten schools or whatever, uh, that, you know, there's sometimes they have a little bit more to learn. Um, not always, but sometimes. Um, the, the, uh, but their biggest thing is, uh, is all of a sudden now they're playing against guys that are, you know, a lot faster. The odds are for the most part against me, and uh, you know, it's going to be an uphill battle. If Levchik is looking for a confidence boost as he makes his jump from small school to the pros, he needs to look no further than the guy he wants to play behind, Dartmouth graduate and Dolphins starting quarterback, Jay Fiedler. I could definitely relate to it. Uh, you know, I was in that position before. And, uh, you know, he's just got to go out there and, uh, you know, play with, with confidence and, and uh, you know, fire the ball out there. Don't be afraid to make a mistake and, uh, you know, show the coaches what he could do. Levchik still has one quarterback school remaining before the Dolphins open training camp in July. By then, the rookie should know whether he's lived up to all the preseason buzz. There's five quarterbacks and, uh, you know, they're only going to keep three, so... You know, I didn't expect them to, to uh, take five in the training camp. Not too many teams do, so uh, that's just another thing I have to look at and uh, hope another hurdle I hopefully have to get over. All right, the Canes hoping today's regular season finale doesn't turn out to be their season finale, too, going for the sweep of New York Tech. 
Second inning, Danny Figueroa going all out, lays out and makes this diving catch to Rob Mike Gaffney. Great catch coming up. New York Tech up 5-4 in the seventh. Canes in a bases loaded jam. J.D. Cockroft picks off Jelani Arnold at first. Canes escape down by one. Later in the seventh, Matt Dreyer doubles to right center, drives in Danny Matienza to give Miami a 6-5 lead. Javi Rodriguez adds an RBI double to clear the bases. Canes sweep New York Tech 11-5. I'm the eternal optimist, so I'm optimistic that we'll get in. I don't know whether we will. I won't sleep much tonight, I guarantee you. There's really nothing we can do now. You know, we've done all we can do up to this point, and it's in their hands. And, you know, if we get lucky, we get in. And if we don't, we don't. And we can't control it. Hey, that will do it for me. Thanks for joining us tonight. Have a great Memorial Weekend, everybody, and stay safe.